In this video, we are going to start learning CSS along with our HTML. Now, if you got here and you haven't seen my last two videos about how to set up this professional web environment with a live reloading server, you're going to want to watch those. Those are in the description. So let's move forward here. CSS, again, stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So I made this basic web page here, but it has no style. It's just all default text, default layout, and I am zoomed in so it looks very big and it's easy for you guys to read. But we're going to want to add style to this right now. And we can do that with two, you guessed it, tags, because everything in HTML is a tag. So there's two tags we can use to get CSS style on our page. We can use a style tag, which will add CSS right here in the HTML document, right here in this index.html file. And the other tag, which we'll wait on for a little bit, is the link tag. The link tag allows us to move that CSS out of the HTML into its own file. And what's good about that is then any HTML page can bring that file in. So you can share all your styles across a bunch of different web pages. And that's what we want to do almost all of the time. But for now, to keep it easy, we're just going to add a style tag here. So now anything inside of this tag is not HTML. It's going to be CSS. So we're going to get in here. We're going to add what's called our first CSS rule. A rule consists of three things, a selector, and then you're going to do what's called curly braces. That's these funny little things right here, which you're pretty much only using coding. And then you have a property and you have a value and you can have a bunch of properties and values. Property two, which there's no such thing as these, by the way, and give it another value. And then each thing is separated by a colon between property and value and a semicolon. That's probably the weirdest thing there when you're learning CSS is you're using these characters that you're not used to using all that often, the curly braces and then the colon and semicolon. So now that we know this is all CSS is, selectors with properties and values, we just have to know how to use them. Selectors are pretty easy. Just pick which element you want to target. So this is called targeting as well. I'm going to target every H1 on my page and I'm going to start changing properties with different values. One property would be, hey, what color is that font? Right now it's by default black, let's change that to red. You can actually use named colors for popular colors. And you can see when I hit save, I now have a red H1. Let's copy this and make our H2 a different color. Let's add another rule. Let's get a new selector here. And let's change that from red. And instead of typing a color, I can actually hover over it and actually use my color picker. You can see I'm picking an RGB color now. Let's pick something a little bit more, I don't know, brown, doesn't really matter. Let's go gray. Gray is nice. I think, there we go, got gray. Hit save, and now my H2 is grayed out. So that's gonna be how you add rules. That's CSS right there in a nutshell. Selectors, properties, and values. I can change several properties on here. Um, I can change the opacity to uh, 0 0.5 and hit save, and now it becomes a little transparent, which just looks like a lighter gray, but if I had a background image on this web page, then that would be slightly transparent. So you can see I can add multiple rules there, um, and that's how you do that in CSS. So let's start changing some rules on our page here. Uh, let's give our body a background color with background. So the body doesn't actually have a color to it because there's no text, it has a background property. Um, let's just go black, so I can get a color picker here and then I'll make it like a dark trendy gray. Let's go ahead and say that's ah, still a little too dark here. Let's change that a little bit more. Hover over that, get my color picker. There we go. So that's my page. Let's make this a less menacing color than red. How about something like a nice cheery blue? There we go. And then let's just make this a lighter color gray to stand out on that dark gray background. There we go. Let's also give this thing a font because that font is killing me right now. So let's go font. And you can see, oh wow, CSS kind of helps me out here. It gives me font family, font display. It helps me see all these different things. I can just go font dash family and then I can go Helvetica new. Look, it even tells me, hey, it looks like you're doing this rule here. That's kind of a popular rule, Arial, comma, Helvetica, comma, sans serif. I'll show you what that means here. 
Ah, that's looking much nicer. So what I've done here on the font family is I've added multiple fonts because I don't know exactly what fonts the user's computer is gonna have installed. If I pick a font on my computer, that doesn't guarantee everybody else is gonna have it. Now these are some popular ones. Helvetica New, Helvetica, those are Mac fonts. Arial is kind of the same version of that, only not quite as good, that Windows mach machines pretty much all have, and then Sans Serif. So there's some ways you can get around the font problem, which we'll get into in future videos and make sure that the font you want is available for every user. But for now, you pick a font family that you know is gonna be popular um, on almost everybody's computer. Just please don't pick Comic Sans. Please do not ever pick Comic Sans. So there we go, I've made my font family and I'm gonna zoom this back out. That's actually what my web page looks like, but it's pretty small on that screen. So I'm gonna zoom back in here. Um, and also I want my default color for my text to kind of be white because I don't wanna to have to change every paragraph in my whole uh, web page. So let's go color white. There we go. So now my default color is white. Let's go ahead and target that button and kind of change the background color of that button. Let's make that gray. And you can see I've got my background color there and let's give it a border of none. And now I have no border. That's excellent. And I also want to change the color on that as well to, I don't know, white. So now you can see I'm kind of styling my web page. I could also give this H1 a background color. Uh, let's make this black. So a really dark black background for my H1. And that's kind of how we build the look and feel of a web page. That's using CSS rules. So from here, I'm gonna give you one piece of homework and then we're gonna start building out an actual web page. From here on out, we're going to learn by building a complete website. Um, the homework is, I want you to Google because the number one skill you're gonna learn as a web developer is how to Google and find an answer on your own. I want you to Google and find out how to give this rounded corners with CSS. I want you to find out how to make these corners rounded rectangle. So go ahead and do your homework, find out what CSS rule it takes to make these corners rounded rectangles, and let's start building out a whole website.